Hi folks, this is a update and a redoing of an earlier tutorial I did a few months ago. The reason why I'm updating it is because some of the functionality has changed and it's improved. So I think a new um, tutorial is in order to uh, show you what's what's different. But we'll start with the basics, work our way forward. So today we're looking at access to button. Now, um, what access to button does is allows us to tell the verbal firmware that's running on your device that when an analog axis is between or on a certain value, uh, I'd like you to output a button press. And what we can do then is do funky stuff like, um, for example, my other tutorial I did recently about F18 and DCS. If I move my analog throttle sliders forward a little notch up to like I think one and two percent what it would do is press a button and automatically DCS would interpret that as move the throttle from the off position into the idle position uh, you can use it for other things as well I have some bound on my um, my verbal grip um, for the brake lever and what it basically means is that if I grip the brake lever the whole way closest to me a hundred percent It'll use that to trigger um, a button, which I use for dropping cargo. So that's the basic functionality of what access to button can do. And I'll, I'll run through how to actually create that. So let's load up the software. First off, just ignore this error message. It's, it's, well, it's not error, it's a warning message. The reason why this message is here, so a couple of people have been complaining about it online. It's just basically to try and warn you that if you start fiddling on with firmware flashing and the MIBI profiling and stuff, there is a chance you could select the wrong device and bugger it up. So it's just a, a gentle warning to say, look, be careful about what you're gonna do right now. So I'm in pro mode. Uh, as before, if you want to toggle pro mode off and on, click the ready button here. So I'm going to select my throttle and load. So let's just pull the config, it's on the device and let me see it. Right, so let's look at how to do a very basic access to button binding. Now, there are um, two different ways you can do this. And I'll show you, show you the first way first, which is the, um, the global way. Now what we have here is we have four settings that we can use globally across all the axes we have. So the axes numbers are here in this column. So we currently have six on this device. And what we do here is we put in the axes we're interested in. So I'll set this to axes one. And now it'll ask for a range. So this is the range between the percentage values that the joystick is going to be sensing and where we actually want to do stuff. So I'm moving my left throttle right now just itself and you can see this percentage going up and down. So I'm going to say, for example, 10% to, let's go for 20. Right, so what I'm asking it to do is when axis one is between 10 and 20%, I want you to output a button. Now I'm gonna select a button number. Uh, I, what I do suggest you do is you start from the top down. Now our maximum available number is 128. So each device can have 128 buttons on it. So I'll just use 128. Right, so there you go. Axis one, 10%, 20%, 128. Now if we go to the button tab, You'll see there's a new wee line been added here. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain how this works. Now, in the early tutorials that I showed you, I explained the basics of what this is. Now, this is physical button. This is the buttons that the internal microcontroller on the verbal device sees. And this table here maps them to logical buttons. So the logical button column here is what Windows sees. The physical button here is what the internal firmware sees. And this setting, generally for most buttons, it's going to be normal. So the first free button I have is 58. Logical button 58 that 
Windows is going to see does not have anything associated with it right now. So that's the first free one I can use. So I'll double click in here and I'll enter the physical button of 128 and then click this save button here. So there you go. So now to actually make this work, I need to save this config back to the device. So the basic concept is this. There is a settings area in the flash on the actual Verpal device. This software, when I load uh, that, it loads it into the software here. I can make adjustments, but when I finish and make the adjustments, I need to click the save button. So as the uh, changes I've made are now actually on the device and then the device will operate using those changes. So I'll just click save. So that just makes sure that what I'm doing right now is in sync. Now, if I go to the Access tab, see me move the throttle backward and forward. Now, if I go to the Button tab, and you see this 128, it's toggling off and on. Now, blue means it's active, or it's been, that's right, blue means it's been activated. I'll just click this, there you go, that resets the status. Now, these, these indicator numbers are for the logical buttons. The three states, black means never been pressed, red means currently pressed and active right now, and blue is it's been pressed. So I move the axis on the left throttle forward, axis one, and now the button goes active. And I move it past, I'm going beyond 20%, and it goes inactive. Now, if I go and load up this, the VPC Joy Tester, and I go and select the device I'm interested in, which is in our drop down here on the left, that's our throttle. Okay, we can see both of these on screen now at the same time. I'll just hit the reset. So, logical button, button 58 is mapped to physical button 128 and when I move the axis I'm at 0% on the throttle right now so if I move it forward oh there she goes so now this is what Windows is going to see button 50 it's gone just gone active and I push the slider the throttle slider forward more and the button goes out so that's it that's that's the first basic way you, you can set this up and those are the steps you need to go through. You need to define your ranges where, where you want this button to go active. And then you need to go into the button tab here and the new virtual button you have, you need to bind it to the, the, the lookup table here, to a logical button so as whenever you activate that thing, that Windows will then see it. And that's what this handy wee bit of text is here. So it's saying 128 is access to button and it's giving you the ID of the axis RX and the range is 10 to 20%. So that is the first way of doing this. This is the, using the access to button. This is global. I can select this for any of the axes here just by changing this ID number of the axis I'm interested in. And that's the most basic way you, you can do it. Now the disadvantage is this. You can only have four of these for the entire device. So use these sparingly. But there is the second set. I'll just show that in a second. Right, so I've already got four of these, but there are other options. This is this is the basic setup that was done um, originally when they first added this feature, access to button. And what I'll do is I'll just clear this back. Just did nothing. If you want to reset these back, just set up this whole row or rows to zero and then save. And that's it basically effectively wiping it.
Right, so the second way you can do this is each of these individual axes, now I currently have six on this device, have their own uh, settings inside for each axis. So if I just double click on axis one here, it brings me up to the individual configuration for that one axis. So this, this tab that's being displayed right now is specifically just for that axis, Rx, which is the first one, number one. Now down at the bottom, near the bottom here, we have these preset ranges and you can use multiple configurations or as many of these as you want. So this gives you far more rigid bands. Um, but if you're, if you want to do a lot of this, this is probably the way you're going to have to do it. So let's just activate a couple of these. I'll just go and say, let's see, no, go 0%. And I will go 21 to 40 and then just click save. Now, if I go back into the button tab now, now it is, it is assigned these itself uh, as 68 and 69. There is no control over which buttons the, um, the physical button is going to use for it. So first thing I'll do here is I'll, clear this one and save it back because we're not using that anymore and now what i'll do is i'll go let's say 68 with the first one on 68 i go save it next which takes us to 59 and i'll go 69 and save so there we go now the, the reason now i'm, I'm using a, a v1 the original verbal throttle. So I, have, I obviously have less buttons than the newer ones will have because they will probably start at a much higher number because they have more actual physical buttons on it. They five way hats plus, or sorry, four way plus push hats. I only have four way on mine, so I don't have anywhere near as, as many buttons, but this, this little information box will show you what the firmware is deciding to use. So what I've done there is logical button 58 is gonna be 68. 59 is going to be 69. Awesome numbering. So um, I'll just click save. I'll load again. Okay, so let's have a wee look at what's happening. So currently, button 68 is active right now. And the reason why it's active is because I set the range to be exactly 0%. If I move that a tiny touch forward, so I'm basically on 3%. So that's now uh, gone out, so that button is not active. Now if I push the slider more forward now, this is obviously the left throttle, and throttle I'm going from, let's be 10 or whatever percent, let's have a look. Okay, we're 18, go back to button. If I put it in that range, there we go. So between 21 and I think it was, yeah, 21 and 40%, that button will be active. Push it forward, then it goes inactive. And yet again, if I put the VPC joystick tester, select my device, which is the throttle again. And there you go, I'm back within the 40 boundary. on less than 21%. Now I'm gonna pull it all the way back. And 0%. And that button's active. So the disadvantage and advantages. Um, using if you only need a couple of these, you can be very precise and configure it here yourself. If you only need two or three of them, then just use this. It's probably the handiest way to do it. And you can be very precise about um, which way you set it up. Because um, I was using 1% and 2% for my bands in my F15 tutorial. And these ones here are some nice presets that you may or may want to use. And the more of these you tick, the more will end up... I'll just kind of cancel out of that. More will end up in this button tab here. And that's basically it. Um, 
this is how you configure it. The like I say, the advantages of this global one is that you can be very very precise. You can have all sorts of crazy numbers in. It has to be whole numbers, by the way. Um, and these uh, columns, and yeah, that's how to set it up. Uh, many questions, just pop them on the uh, YouTube uh, replies, and I'll see if I can help you. But it's pretty simple to do. Hope this helps.